So friends, in this video, we will be learning about fermented dairy products. Uh, in this, uh, dahi is the most prominent one, although yogurt is also there. But uh, dahi, we will be talking about preparation of fermented dairy products. See, as such dahi or curd, it is a semi-solid mass. See, semi-solid uh, semi means, uh, see, when you break it, obviously it will break. So it is not solid or it is not compact. Okay. So it is prepared from pasteurized or boiled milk by add uh, by addition of a harmless bacteria which tends to produce lactic acid upon proliferation. Okay, they make a, uh, dahi may also contain cane sugar. So when it is dahi are of uh, see dahi can be sweetened and sour. When it is sweetened, it is called misti and uh, misti dahi, and when it is sour, it is called masti dahi. Similarly, dahi can also be categorized as set type and stirred type. Okay. So uh, usually, uh, see dahi may also contain added sugar. Further, lactic acid bacteria are used for preparation of dahi. Uh, although some bacteria may use citric acid to uh, find, uh, say for diacetyl, see diacetyl is the main flavoring compound. So starter selection, these lactic acid bacteria, they are often called a starter. So starter uh, selection is very important to have the perfect blend of flavor in the product. See, uh, now comes with the preparation of product. First of all, raw material is taken, it is evaluated. See, as such raw material, it should be of good quality. Why? Because we are using it for preparation of, uh, for proliferation of microorganisms. So, already if it has been proliferated or the initial count is higher, then what will happen? Uh, the starter culture will not be able to grow properly because it is it will face competition from the previously existing bacteria. So obviously the raw material should be of high quality, it should be free from any off flavor, off color, etc, etc. So uh, see, once we have taken that, yes this is the raw material, we will be using it for product preparation. Then we filter it to remove extraneous matter, then we standardize it, usually what we do, we keep slightly 2% higher SNF in case of curd and the heat preparation. This is why because uh, see SNF they contain proteins fine and proteins have got water binding capacity. So obviously this will give firmness to the product. See that is why weighing off is prevented when we have higher amount of SNF. Then we go for homogenization. Homogenization also increases the curd. Uh, see, Homogenization also increase, reduces the cream layer formation and improves the texture. Improving texture is because of water binding of the proteins. Okay, I uh, see their surface area has increased. That is the reason. Then we go for heat treatment. See, uh, you will find that this is just 90 degree for 10 minutes or it may be 85 degree centigrade for 15 minutes. Uh, it could vary. But the point is that uh, in case of heat treatment, we give, uh, in case of the heat preparation, we give intense heat treatment this is more intense as compared to milk pasteurization there are some reasons for it first it increases the viscosity fine increasing viscosity means the product will have more binding water binding capacity or the product will be more firm an important point kills the contaminating and competitive microbes so whatever the com uh, the competition the start culture will face we are eliminating it by heat treatment makes it uh, this third point is uh, subsequent of the second that is in uh, killing the competitive microbes will result in uh, making the pro making the medium sterile for the proliferation of microorganisms or starter cultures again this results in removal of air which make see these uh, starters they are mostly anaerobic in nature okay so when we remove air obviously we are making conductive environment for the growth of starter cultures See, uh, not uh, see this air removal is by ox uh, by heating, and again, see when we are heat treatmented, we are heat treating. Free sulfur hydro groups are there, which also tends to make, uh, which also tends, uh, which also provides nutrition, and they are also reduces the oxidizing environment. So these are the important. See, this heat treatment is that is why important. Okay, then what we do, we cool it to inoculation temperature I mean, whatever say 37 to 42 degree centigrade is the temperature usually we go for uh, fermentation so when once the product the milk temperature is lowered then we will add starter culture into it see it could be between 1 to 1.5 percent nowadays dvs cultures are there so 
uh, a little they require in less quantity fine further they are very sure that uh, their activity is very fast okay so you get uh, they are usually used at large dairies fine dvs cultures some may use uh, the malda cultures like that also but mostly they are using dvs cultures okay so what uh, so see when we are preparing set uh, see so we will be adding starter culture and then after mixing it we uh, pack it uh, we package it and after packaging we incubate it till the re till the ph reaches to say here it is 4.5 to 4.6 usually this is the range okay once it is once the ph is in has reached 4.5 or so they go for blast cooling see blast cooling is what and this is a type of cooling only but the point is that see at this when the ph has decreased to 4.5 the culture is active fine so if they continue to grow if temperature is higher then they will continue to grow and they will spoil the product to avoid this the product needs to be cooled as fast as possible so we go for blast cooling blast cooling is rapidly decreasing the temperature they have blowers in them uh, in a blast cooling chamber there will be refrigeration system and uh, blowers will be there which will increase the air velocity fine so this is there so uh, once uh, this is usually stopped see once the temp product temperature is decreased to say less than 5 then they go for storage storage it is maintaining the same temperature okay uh, fine this is what is about uh, uh, fermented daily products preparation